With the hype building up to E3, I wanted to make a video discussing everything we know about the next generation Xbox console. There has been a lot of rumors floating around about the next generation consoles, especially PlayStation and Xbox's next iteration on their consoles. So I wanted to go into complete detail about everything that has been confirmed or even rumored about the Xbox console, especially since E3 is bound to shine some much needed light on exactly what Microsoft is working on with the next Xbox hardware. And considering Sony won't have any kind of presence at E3 this year, I feel it would be a great opportunity for Xbox to showcase what they seem to call the most powerful console ever made. Yet as we know, there has been a lot more detail surrounding the PS5, especially since Mark Cerny himself released an interview discussing the PlayStation 5 in some detail. But I think Xbox will show a lot of specs and other great details about their next console once E3 rolls around June 9th. So let's dive into exactly what was said and what we could expect from the next console hardware from Xbox. But before we get into all that, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. The support helps the channel out more than you know, and it's greatly appreciated. But enough with all that, so let's get into this. While we know Microsoft hasn't officially revealed any new Xbox yet, we know that they've been working on the next console hardware for a little while. Last year at E3 2018, Phil Spencer was on the Microsoft stage when he said Xbox is deep into architecting the next Xbox consoles where we will once again deliver on our commitment to set the benchmark for console gaming. Now, as most of us know, the commitment to set the benchmark for console gaming refers to them wanting to be the most powerful console in the industry, but also have a console that's extremely easy to develop on for the developers. This indicated that Xbox once again wants to swing for the fences and bring out the most powerful console ever, much like they did with the Xbox One X. Which, all of that is great, but there's been a lot of reports and rumors that suggest there will be two new Xbox consoles come next generation. Thorod has reported there's consoles with codename Scarlet. One will be the high power machine codename Anaconda, which will either be a little more expensive than the other consoles, but will be worth the price with the amount of power injected into it. Or some reports suggest it will be the same price as the PlayStation 5. While the other console codename Lockhart will be a budgeted console, this console might be streaming centric that doesn't have as much power as the other consoles on the market, but it will utilize the xCloud technology to play games to keep up with the power narrative, especially if they change the CPU within it. And all this information leads me to E3 2019, which of course is the biggest gaming event of the year in a gamer's paradise. And with E3 being right around the corner, what does that mean for Xbox and their next generation consoles? Well, according to reports, Xbox will showcase their new consoles at the Xbox conference. And this fits exactly what Phil Spencer has said previously when he said the company will go as big at E3 as it's ever been. So we can expect the new consoles to be shown at E3 along with studios, games, and services that will make the Xbox a very appealing platform to invest in if you're a gamer. But let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the new console. Let's talk about the release date and price. While Microsoft hasn't spoken about the release date for the next Xbox, there's been a lot of rumors about manufacturer dates and launch possibilities. But the most popular release date for the new console does always fall on fall 2020. This goes for PS5 and Xbox. There has been reports that the next PS5 won't launch in the next 12 months. So that does coincide with the release date of fall 2020. And with Xbox already saying they've been working on the next generation console last year, it fits exactly with the fall 2020 release date. Both Sony and Microsoft have kept a tight lip about when they'll release the new consoles. So it will be very interesting to see what both companies business plans are for the launch of their new consoles. Because as we know, launching it and having a great marketing campaign is crucial to a console success in the first two to three years. Now, as for the price, we already talked about them a little bit beforehand. It would seem that the Anaconda will be the most powerful console on the market. And like the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. The Anaconda console will be the powerhouse crown jewel of the consoles on the market. And most people that want performance will have to pay for it. Now, there's been some hints that the console will be at the 499 range, which fits exactly what the Xbox One X was when it launched, and that the Lockhart console will be around the 299 range. Now, I have to say these are all rumors and nothing official. It's just what most reporters have said the price range might be. Xbox wants to corner the market with the most powerful console built for performance and the most affordable new console built for gaming and streaming. 
So the $499 and $299 price range will be perfect, especially if the PS5 is more expensive than the Lockhart, yet less expensive than the Anaconda. But I have to say, there has been rumors that the new PS5 will be the same price as the Anaconda, but not be as powerful. So maybe that's Xbox's strategy, corner the market at every avenue. Now let's talk about the specs these awesome machines will have. Like I said before, the Anaconda is built for performance, so it will have the better hardware attached to it. While the Lockhart is essentially built for streaming, we don't know if the Lockhart would have a disk drive, but you can expect the Anaconda to have a disk drive attached to it. So here are the rumored specs of the each console. For the Lockhart, it's an, a custom 8-core CPU, a custom Navi 4 Plus Teraflop GPU, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, and the storage will be one terabyte SSD. As for the Anaconda, it'll be a custom 8-core CPU, a custom Navi 12 Plus Teraflop GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, GDDR6, and a one terabyte SSD storage. As you can see, the Anaconda will be far more powerful than the Lockhart in the GPU department along with the RAM. And while those parts of the console are very important and crucial to a console's success, I have to say the most important aspect for me is this CPU and storage attached to both. As we all know, the current consoles have been bottlenecked by the CPU attached to them. Yes, even the Xbox One X has limits attached to it because of the CPU that came with the console. This custom 8-core CPU will provide developers a lot more power to make amazing worlds or have amazing physics-based animations, and you throw in the storage of an SSD and you have something truly special. The one terabyte SSD drive will almost eliminate the load screen for almost all games. Instead of waiting 45 to 70 seconds for a game to load when you first launch it, this new storage can load things in maybe 5 to 10 seconds. The quality of life will be what most gamers notice when they get their hands on these new consoles with the SSD attached to them. Now that's everything known about the next generation consoles, especially on the Xbox side, which I know is a lot of information, but there's still a lot left on the table we don't know about. It seems that Xbox is really keeping this console very close to the vest, especially since they want to launch the console with great support, be it games, services, and amazing hardware. As for what I think, I truly believe that Xbox learned the hard way last generation that you better come ready to fight for console dominance. Nothing will be given to you easily in this industry, and you have to adapt and invest a lot of time and money into the gaming platform if you want fans to take you seriously. And over the last two years, Xbox seems to be doing exactly that. Not only do Xbox fans have the awesome hype for E3 coming up, but they also have the added benefit of having the most powerful console in the world. Not to mention the added investment from Microsoft with new studios, services, and of course, most importantly, games. So I'm looking forward to E3 this year, especially since I'm excited to finally move on from these CPUs that have been holding back developers and consoles for far too long. But let me know what you guys think about all this. Do you think Xbox will have the most powerful console next generation? Will PS5 compete in the power department of the Xbox? Does this new added investment in the gaming space make Microsoft dangerous to other companies? Are you excited to see all the companies that show up to E3? Go down below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. Any support helps the channel out more than you know. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my videos. Also, follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description. If you want to hang out and chat with me, I'm very active with my chat and always playing games. I hope to see you guys there. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.